Hello again. I know I was just here talking about Target and its new gender non-conforming, gender neutral uh, signage. Uh, but I also wanted to do a little video about the difference between sex, gender, um, sexuality, and all of those things. Because I know a lot of people are confused because I read a lot of people's statements and um, I just thought I would walk you through some of the more common terms and explain them how I understand them and how um, also the GLAD media reference guide explains them. Um, sex, this is the easy one. This is this is the, the easy little like catchphrasey thing. Sex is what's between your legs and gender is what's between your ears. <clears throat> so your sex is something based on your physical body, like you're assigned a sex at birth. You're born with a penis, you're assigned male, you're born with a vagina, you're assigned female. Gender is how you choose to express yourself um, in the world. Your gender expression, your gender identity, there's different facets of it. Of it. Your gender identity is how you see yourself on the inside, and then your gender expression is how you express yourself. So for example, um, I am my sex is male, I'm a male-bodied person, um, but I don't really like adhere to like strict gender rules. I mean, I'm a boy pretty much now and then, sometimes I'm a girl, um, but the idea of gender to me seems kind of like silly. It seems limiting. It seems like this idea that someone else created that has pretty much caused me trouble for most of my life until I was able to liberate myself from it and say, you know what, I'm just going to be gender fluid. I'm just going to be me. So other things um, then is a lot of you might have heard the term cis or cisgendered or cis woman or cis man. Cis, I, I think it's a Latin term or a Greek term. Um, and basically, uh, actually, it's a term used by some to describe people who are not transgender. Cis is a Latin prefix meaning on the same side and therefore it's an antonym of trans. Um, so that's what cis is because I know some people have been confused about that. Um, transgender, transsexual, um, transvestite, all of these words people get a bit confused with. Transvestite is an old term that is no longer used so much. And the updated term is cross-dresser. Now, usually cross-dressers, not always, are straight identifying men who like to wear women's clothes, who like to express themselves femininely. I performed at this thing called the Seahorse Ball once in Adelaide, and it was kind of eye-opening and magical. It was an event for um, cross-dressers, and um, they were all there, like these sort of grown men um, in their everyday lives who were presenting as women, dressed as women, who were all there with their wives. And it was really eye-opening for me because there was this lady, it's a little bit transparent. If you've seen Transparent when he goes to the cross-dresser camp, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but it was amazing. Like there was this lovely, like well-to-do lady who was there with her husband who, he didn't, he didn't pass as a woman. He didn't, you know, by society standards or anything like that. But um, he was just there and he was just comfortable. He's in women's clothes and he was there with his wife. And I was just like, good on you. Like they're together, the wife supporting the husband, seeing that their love for each other was something greater than his gender expression or how he chose to dress. So that is cross-dressing. Then completely separate to that is drag, which is usually a performance-based thing, usually by a gay man dressing up in women's clothes to perform uh, for an audience or, you know, we know what drag is. Um, and then there's transgender, which is a completely different thing altogether from drag. Um, there are some crossovers, but pretty much um, transgender means that you are living as a, you, you feel that you are a different gender to the sex that you were assigned at birth. Um, now that has come to be understood as something very binary in our society. For example, you are born male and you feel that you are fem you are assigned male at birth and you go about living as a female or expressing yourself as a female through any number of means. Um, but the way that it's become binary is that it now seems like you are either cisgender or you're transgender. Also, it's transgender. It's not transgendered. 
little fun fact I learned that recently. Um, so if you are transgender, I mean the word, it, well here on, on GLAD it says an umbrella term for people whose gender identity and or gender expression differs from what is typically associated with the sex they were assigned at birth. That makes sense? People under the transgender under umbrella may describe themselves of one or more of a variety of terms, including transgender. So transgender people doesn't, if you're transgender or if someone is transgender, it doesn't mean necessarily that they're born in a male body and they want to have breasts and a vagina and look like a woman. It just means that they don't identify with the sex they're assigned at birth. So someone may, who is transgender may just live as a woman in society, live as something you know, slightly more ambiguous. Maybe they go on hormones, maybe they don't. Maybe they take hormone blockers, maybe they don't. Maybe they have surgery uh, on their, their chest or their genitals. And then of course there is uh, trans men, which is somebody who is assigned female at birth, who wants to um, live as a man. Um, and again, it's, there's all these things at the spectrum. It's not, it's not everybody's objective to completely change their bodies and, you know, through surgery, through hormones and everything like that, to live completely as the opposite sex or the opposite gender. Um, but that is sort of the common belief. And I sort of feel that there is this gray area that needs to be explored in between in, in, you know, the transgender movement, because, um, I think there's a perception, like, especially with young children, there's this idea that like, oh, my son likes wearing dresses. He must want to be a woman. Um, and I just think as somebody who grew up, I think it's really cool that parents are supporting and their support groups for stuff like that. I know that, um, Chaz Bono runs and works with a great support group in Los Angeles. I don't know what it's called. I'll have to find out. Um, for families and children to go to. Um, but I think that this is also important just to give kids space and give them that room to move, to, to express their gender however they want. I think that the thing that, you know, our society is guilty of, which harks back to this um, target gender neutral thing, is that we're trying to put gender into boxes and it doesn't fit in a box, especially in children. So I think it's about giving children room to move and express themselves and listening to what their needs are and listening to what they say. And, and you know, if you want to get um, further input and further help, there's some really great support groups out there. Um, so transgender, a trans man is someone who is assigned female at birth and uh, now presents as male, lives as male. A trans woman is someone who was assigned male at birth and now lives as a woman. Um, so yeah, drag queens. I also forgot to mention drag kings before. Sorry to all of that about the drag. Sorry to all of the drag kings out there. Drag kings are uh, females, usually of lesbian persuasion, who like to dress up as men for a performance aspect. The cool thing about drag is is that it transcends gender for me quite a lot. It, you can, yes, you're presenting as something feminine, but it's not about being a woman. For me, in my style of drag, it is about presenting as female. Uh, it's a female illusion, but, um, you know, you can come out painted green. You can come out with wings. You can come out covered in silver glitter. You can come out as Oscar the Grouch. You know, it drag transcends gender and it's about, uh, if you're a drag queen, feminine style performance, I guess, or, or a masculine style performance if you're a drag king. Um, so that is gender. Then there's this whole topic of sexuality. Sexuality comes in a lot of forms, just like gender, just like race. I like to use race as an example because, um, because, sorry, someone just sent me a message. Uh, we can actually see the diversity of race with our eyes. We have black people, we have white people, we have brown people, we have Asian people, we have all different colored skins people, colored skins, colored skinned people. And then we can see all of the shades in between. So there's not just white people and black people. There's not just males and there's not just females. There's not just gay people. There's not just straight people. Um, race obviously is mixed by people of different races having sex and creating different shades gender and sexuality don't work that way. But sexuality, we have 
the terms heterosexual and homosexual. Heterosexual obviously is uh, attracted to people of the opposite sex. Homosexual is, sorry, it's not actually attraction. Homosexual, oh no, now I'm confusing myself. Homosexual is same sex attracted, heterosexual is opposite sex attracted. Um, but then there's terms like gay and lesbian, which don't just have to do with who you have sex with, but they can also be based on lifestyle. And this is quite subjective. Um, let me click over to my sexual orientation is a scientifically accurate term for an individual's enduring physical, romantic, or emotional attraction to members of the same or opposite sex, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, heterosexual orientations. Um, so we all know what gay is. We all know what lesbian is. Bisexual is somebody who has physical, romantic, or emotional attractions to both sexes. Um, and then there's these other terms like queer. Traditionally, queer was a pejorative term, um, but it's become appropriated. I'm kind of reading and paraphrasing here. It's been appropriated by the LGBT community to describe themselves. It's kind of one of those claiming back the words. And so queer is actually now someone who I feel identifies as not being part of the status quo, not being in the heteronormative ideal of what sexuality is. So you can have a straight man who's queer. I have a friend who is attracted to women, but he's really gay in all of the things that he likes. And so I kind of think of him uh, as someone who would fit into the queer category. Um, and I like the term queer as opposed to gay, just because it, for me personally, it's kind of like a political statement. It's saying that I'm not going to Assign, I'm not going to conform to society's ideals of what sexuality is, or even just that heteronormative idea of what a male is or what a female is or what a, sorry, what gay is and what straight is and who I should be attracted to. Then there's terms like pansexual, which I like, which means it's kind of like bisexual. There seems to be this issue some people have with bisexual, like they're like, oh, if a, if a man is, says he's bisexual, it's just because he hasn't come out as gay yet, you know, bi now, gay later. Um, and so I feel like the term pansexual, though it's slightly different, has kind of come into uh, as a new word for people to adopt instead of bisexual. Bisexual is a completely valid sexuality. You can be attracted to both sexes. Pansexual means that your sexual attraction is not limited to someone's gender. So you could be attracted to males, females, uh, you know, a trans man, a trans woman, someone who is more gender ambiguous. That's how I like to identify. I've been with women, I've been with men, um, and, and people who identify in between. And uh, my sexual attraction is based on what I'm attracted to in that moment. It's not based on, oh, this person is a woman. I'm not attracted to women, even though I can feel my loins moving. So yeah, my sexual attraction is based on who I am attracted to sexually. And so that is why I like the term pansexual. Um, what else? Queer, genderqueer, I didn't say before. And I didn't talk about gender fluid. Uh, um, genderqueer is a blanket umbrella term that covers diversity in gender. Just like queer covers for sexuality, genderqueer covers for gender. And it means that you don't identify as a particular rigid gender. Gender fluid is another term that's been used. I know Miley Cyrus has used gender expansive. Ruby Rose has used gender fluid. I use the term gender queer or gender fluid. Um, you know, sometimes I'm a girl, sometimes I'm a boy, sometimes I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I'm not the most masculine boy. Sometimes I've embraced my femininity over the last sort of 18 months and it's been really empower empowering. Um, and yeah, so that's sort of me explaining some of the terms, um, to you all. I hope that made sense. And, uh, what did I want to say? I wanted to say, in my Boys Like Me show, I talk about this. I used to have a lot of shame associated with doing drag. I used to think that there was something wrong with it. I used to think that there was, I mean, we grew up, I'd grown up in a society where I was taught that I was valuable because of my masculinity. I was a male and that men were masculine and I wore women's clothes and that made me feel shame about that. And I don't know whether it's because our society is misogynist and it says there's something wrong with being a girl. You know, that quote from The Concrete Jungle and the Madonna song. You think that being a girl is degrading for a girl to look like a 
for a boy to look like a girl is degrading because you think that being a girl is degrading, but secretly you'd like to know what it's like, what it feels like for a girl. Um, I don't know why it is. I don't know whether it's just because that's like a patriarchy sort of male, alpha male kind of vibe that men are men and women are women. But anyway, it caused me a lot of shame for a long time. And I remember uh, a Sydney drag queen, Portia Turbo, once said, you have to think of drag as a strength, not a weakness. And I now elaborate that and say you have to think of you as a strength, not a weakness. And it wasn't until I shined a light on those little dark recesses of my mind. I did suffer from a lot of internalized transphobia in my 20s. I suffered from internalized homophobia. I'd suffered from all sorts of stuff, not fitting in, not looking right, wanting to look like one of the muscly underwear model boys and never fitting that stereotype and thinking that boys wouldn't find me attractive because um, I didn't fit into that ideal of six pack and abs and that I wore women's clothes and so how could that be desirable? Like all of this stuff that went on my head in my 20s. And then I realized when I shined a light on it and when I really put it out there and I owned the fact that these were things about myself and I started celebrating these things about myself, <coughs> they became my greatest strength instead of my weakness. This thing that I had hidden or had shame from my entire twenties, all of a sudden, now I'm like, yeah, I really love this. I love getting to dress up as Courtney and perform. I actually personally don't think of, I mean, obviously I do drag, but for me, the term drag queen has never been something that I fully adopted. Um, in Australia, I used to call myself a gender illusionist. I don't really know if that's even the term. Obviously I'm a drag queen. I'm not being like trying to be politically correct, but I don't, I don't, particularly identify with the term drag queen. I think of um, myself more as gender fluid um, and expressing myself as Courtney as a performer and expressing myself as Shane and expressing myself in other facets in between. Um, so yeah, I just guess my message is that if there's something about you that you're ashamed of, it doesn't have to be a gender, it doesn't have to be a sexuality, it could be something that at some point during your childhood somebody made you feel wrong about yourself or about who you were, either through their words or their actions. I guess I want you to know that that thing isn't actually your fault. You didn't do that. And that who you are is completely perfect and completely valid. And that when you start to shine a light on that thing, the darkness goes away and you can be empowered by it. And rather than being a victim to that thing, you now use that as something that has made you stronger because that thing isn't happening now. It happened then and it's not happening anymore. And it's only happening because of the stories we keep perpetuating in our own minds. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I like to write my gratitude journal each night. I like to write affirmations. Um, <clears throat> sort of empowering positive statements about who I am and about what I want and the direction that I want to go. Those things really help me. Meditation um, is really amazing. And um, yeah, who you are is enough. Who you are is who you're supposed to be. And uh, another important thing is that we are all equal, ladies and gentlemen. And it is important to remember that. Nobody is greater than just because someone's a celebrity doesn't make them better or just because somebody's overweight doesn't make them less than or because somebody's not as attractive doesn't make them less than or somebody's prettier doesn't make them better we're all equal and we all have different strengths the race is long and in the end it is only with yourself so try and make the most of it i'm gonna go now have a little nap before my show tonight in ann arbor at necto necto pride i think it's a pride another pride it's August and I'm still having prides. I was at Cleveland Pride next weekend. I think I'm at Ray Lee Pride in North Carolina coming up with Willem and Katya. Oh, I love Katya. Um, anyway, love you guys. I'm back to P-Town tomorrow, Provincetown in Massachusetts. I'm going to be there all week. I will see you soon. God, I've rattled on in this one, haven't I? Bye.